let me start by saying that I'm very pleased uh, to welcome the President of Lithuania, Kitanas Nauseda, to Strasbourg and the European Parliament. The President will shortly address the plenary uh, in our This is Europe series of debates uh, with uh, EU heads of state. Dear Hitanas, just three uh, days ago, 11th of March, your country celebrated the day of the restoration of the state of Lithuania. You know firsthand what it means to be under political pressure from an oppressive authoritarian regime and what it takes, most importantly, to fight for your freedom. Lithuania has consistently shown leadership in supporting Ukraine strongly, as well as the Belarusian democratic opposition in defense of European values and respect for European and international law. And I am positive that Lithuania will continue to play a crucial role in the EU's determined response to Russia's illegal war, be it through political, financial, humanitarian, or military support. Lithuania has also been leading efforts by showing concrete solidarity with the Ukrainian people. You opened your homes and your hearts to more than 74,000 Ukrainians in what is the largest inflow of refugees in your country's history. Finally, I also very much welcome all your efforts in favor of a real security and defense union. And I am sure that Lithuania will continue to lead in strengthening the European security infrastructure. Hosting the NATO summit in Vilnius this summer is a clear sign of your commitment towards our common defense. Our European defense capability should be developed to increase our strategic autonomy and in a way that complements NATO action and does not duplicate nor compete with it. As we are short of time and I want to allow time for questions, I will leave it at this. So, dear President, dear Hitanas, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Madam President. It's my pleasure to be here at the official seat of the European Parliament in Strasbourg, at the very heart of European democracy. Today, I will be honored to address members, members of European Parliament, a political forum in which the most urgent European issues are discussed, the European values are safeguarded. First, I would like to thank you, dear Roberta, for your strong stance on Ukraine. Your recent visit to Lviv is an important sign on, of the strong ongoing European Parliament's support to Ukraine. Ukrainians are defending freedom and democratic European values with their blood. Ukraine belongs to the European Union. Ukrainians proved in it in so many ways. Our task is to help Ukraine reach its goal, to make all the necessary reforms in order to join the European Union. I very much welcome the statement, statement you made, Madam President, in brief regarding U, uh, Ukraine's succession negotiations. We should aim at starting membership talks already this year. The European perspective is what gives hope and strength to European people, uh, so to Ukrainian people fighting for their freedom on the battlefield. It is important to keep pressure on Russia to and continue with consistent EU sanctions policy. Sanctions should be painful, with no space for circumvention and derogation. We must also seek responsibility for the crimes of aggression committed by Russia in Ukraine. I commend the European Parliament resolution on the establishment of the special tribunal. One more important point. We should join our efforts in fight and fight against Russian disinformation and history revisionism. There is a strong need for a common EU policy on historical memory and evaluation of totalitarian regimes. I appreciate what the European Parliament is doing in this domain, and we could do more. Lithuania is ready to contribute. Dear Roberta, thank you once again for the warm welcome. I look forward for, to the debate with the members of the parliament. Thank you. Hello, uh, 
I have a question for both uh, leaders. I'm Yusnel Kevichuta from Lithuanian Public Broadcaster. So uh, last year we heard uh, in this uh, European Parliament a speech of uh, Ursula von der Leyen, and she said we should have listened more to Baltic states. Uh, do, what do you think? Uh, did you believe that the Western world really learned their lessons about Russia and won't repeat the same mistakes in the future? Thank you very much. So, uh, thank you very much. I very much share that statement that we should have listened more carefully to our Baltic friends. We, let's say, said it, started to say it almost immediately from the 24th of February. One would have perhaps wanted that we did that earlier, because if there's one thing we have learned, or at least finally understood, is that we cannot trust Putin. He didn't stop in 2008. He did not stop in 2014, and he will definitely uh, not stop now. Uh, and this is why we have continued so resolutely in this parliament, but I can also say with such unity and firmly as a European Union, and also as a global uh, democratic community in our response uh, to Russia's aggression. What we have done in our reaction, I would say, can be a blueprint going forward. Finding out who are our allies, understanding our partners who have lived, let's say, in the shadow or within the shadow of an autocratic regime as a neighbor. The invasion has also made us realize that we cannot be complacent. Uh, and if there is one thing that this institution, this parliament, has been extremely united on, is that there is no way that we will let war fatigue set in, and that we will stay step by step with Ukraine, side by side with Ukraine, in order for all financial, logistical, military, and political help to be given, also in their path towards accession to the European Union. Thank you for your question. I think this is probably, my answer would be that there's no big need to talk about the past. Yes, we had quite big uh, differences in our opinion about the threats posed by Russia in the past, but I see huge shift in the thinking since the uh, war uh, in Ukraine started. And now we are in the process of learning. I think the politics is the process of learning, no matter we are, to, are we talking about foreign policy or domestic policy. And I see that many countries change their attitude and uh, we see more and more uh, people, politicians, experts on our side. And they understand that at least uh, having in mind the current circumstances, Russia poses long-term threat. We have to understand it. But uh, this is not only bad news. We can look uh, to this news from the positive side. We have to prepare. We have to increase the resilience of our societies, the resilience of our energy systems. And I think uh, in the military terms, we can build just credible deterrence uh, and, and, and to, to, to prolong this period of, of peace. So I think this is most important now to stay united not to talk so much about the past and uh, just look forward and to go forward. 